Welcome to Binary Jazz, the only podcast where neither the hosts nor the listeners have any idea what they're talking about. Uh, I am joined today. My name is Chris. I am Jazz Sequence on the internet. I am joined with my co-host, Binary Gary, Gary in real life, who is an amateur artichoke harvester and grower uh, in southern Florida. And I don't... I'm guessing, I don't even know if you live in Southern Florida. Um, I mean, I mean, that, that's where you harvest the artichokes, though. Yes, so. Great crop this year. Great yeah. crop this year. And uh, the lovely and talented Miss Allison Tarr, who's Allison Plus on the internets, uh, who is a burgeoning uh, travel blogger, uh, the kind that doesn't actually blog about her travels. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, without further ado, how is everyone, first of all? I was talking earlier before we started recording about my Shakespearean insult daily calendar. Um, it's actually pretty good. Yesterday's was from Othello. I wanted to share it. Uh, today's actually even better, but I wanted to share yesterday's. Uh, it says, go to woman, throw your vile guesses in the devil's teeth. From whence you have them, you are jealous now. But today's is even better. <laughs> Today's is from Henry the Fourth, Part Two, and it says, "I have borne and borne and borne and have been fubbed off and fubbed off and fubbed off from this day to that day. It is a shame to be thought on." And I would like to know, pray tell, gentle uh, uh, guests and viewers and everyone, what "fubbed off" means, and if Shakespeare is actually cursing in a way that we would consider to be cursing then, like if it just like changed, like is he actually saying fucked off? I don't know. It does sound like it, doesn't it? I want to vote yes. I think in context it means like blown off or ignored. Um, yeah, it does sort of sound yeah, like that. But it, it carries, but it definitely carries the uh, connotation of yeah. uh, vulgarity. That's, that's why I like, that's, that's why I was impressed by, by this. Uh, that's what show. I do on weekends. I just close the laptop and fub off for the weekend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. There you go. So uh, if you're new to the show, uh, then you should listen to the other two episodes uh, first before listening to this <laughs> so you one. Know what's so, going on. so stop whatever you're doing now and go back and, and download and listen to the other episodes. Um, yeah, continuity certainly matters in this thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but if you are new to the show, uh, we will have Allison bring us uh, topics that neither of I, uh, Gary nor I know about, and uh, then we will attempt to discuss those topics to the best of our ability. And today, the topic is... It's my favorite Esperanto. Part. Esperanto. That was a hit song last year, right? <laughs> it was a real rager. I don't know. I'm, at, I'm like, I'm not as in touch with what the kids are listening to these days, but I'm pretty sure it was, it was out there on the dance floor. It, um, it is a song that um, Sesame Street did a cover of for Rubber Duck. Um, it's pretty fantastic. It and is a... we can make sure that link makes it to the show notes, I guess, huh? Yeah, show notes. <laughs> ha ha. Um, it is a language I can learn in uh, Duolingo. Let's see, where is it? Esperanto, right there. Right there. So uh, if, cool. if, if you're listening, I am showing my Duolingo, and it has Esperanto. And I'm not learning Esperanto, hmm. nor is anybody. I, I don't know what country Esperanto is spoken in. Does anybody know? It's, or I if it is spoken answer. at all. Wait, I think, <laughs> I think Esperanto is um, like a Native American dialect, isn't it? No? Again, do you want me to answer or like you guys can just like take this? <laughs> I feel like, confident about well, it. Like, see, the, the funny the thing. Native American dialect, right, Allison? <laughs> the, funny thing about, the funny thing about Esperanto is I don't know. I mean, except for the people who actually speak it, I don't know that anybody actually knows what it is. And that makes it funny because uh, I don't know how many people here are Red Dwarf watchers, but I am a huge uh, uh, Red Dwarf fan, uh, the boys from the Dwarf. 
and um, and so Arnold Rimmer, who is the dead crew member who's resurrected as a hologram, uh, was learning Esperanto and or attempting to learn Esperanto, and that's his like big claim to fame. Not one of his big claims to fame. He keeps bragging about how he knows Esperanto or is learning Esperanto, and nobody cares because this is millions of years after the entire human civilization has died. So there's literally no one in in the universe who speaks Esperanto. So there's literally no one who would even care, um, even if there were people who spoke Esperanto when people were alive. So. I think that the whole point that nobody knows what Esperanto actually is, is kind of the point of Esperanto. <laughs> it's like the most secret club imaginable. Something to that effect, yeah. If, if you were gonna make up a language, right? What, would it what, be Esperanto? Well, no, how would you start? I mean, would you, would, you, would you take like what we know as, you know, sentence structure, nouns and verbs, et cetera, and say, I need to figure out like an alternative way to say these things that I already know exist, or would you approach it from a completely different perspective? And would it be a new language if you just replaced words? I mean, it would be, but I mean, it would be very interesting. That's definitely an interesting thought. I mean, obviously people do it all the time, uh, make up new languages. There's new languages that are invented for movies. There's new languages that are, I mean, Klingon is a language that people, learn and speak to each other at extremely nerdy conventions and uh yeah so i and i i think that there's a variety of different ways you can go about it um languages are invented for books um i think that the easiest way obviously is to just sort of like you know swap a word in for another word right. um but i don't necessarily think that's the best way of doing it um because that doesn't really that doesn't really explore the nature of language. And also you can make up whatever you want, but if you don't have someone to communicate with, it's kind of moot because you're not this is translating true. your experience to another person with that language. This is you true. know, I, like language is so, I mean, I guess like communication really. Um, it's so much easier like when you can see folks like this podcast I don't think would work if we were all if we all covered our cameras or just made it an audio call I guess would be an alternative um so I mean with that visual portion how much I mean how much language becomes becomes visual after after the creation of words you know like I can say things in different ways but you can tell by my facial expressions like what I really mean mm. not changing inflection and tone Maybe, maybe it's yes, true, and, that, and, that's, that's, and that's why emoji is such an important part of text conversations. It is. Like, yes. I, I was late to that game, and I realized that I sound like an asshole at some point, and that when you use emoji, you can say things and, not, and sound like less of an asshole. So I, now I'm, I'm a, a big user of emoji to convey uh, tone. Are you big on customizing emoji in Slack? Oh yeah, I when I joined uh, when I joined Human Made, I added probably like fifty or more emoji <laughs> because their emoji game was was lacking. Oh, that's interesting. See, I would have expected this to be pretty good given given the folks that are over there. There was there was some interesting stuff there, definitely, but they were lacking many. I mean, I and basically like I had all the so when. Um, and now I'm name dropping our old agency. Uh, when I when when I moved from uh, when I left web dev, when web dev moved from uh, from hip chat to Slack, um, I downloaded all the hip chat uh, emoji so that we could import them, so we could move them into Slack. Um, and so I still had all of those emoji. So I was like, well, I've got all this stuff. I'm going to put it into into um, human maids as well. So, so two questions. Number one, is there a bulk importer for emoji or do you have to do that like manually? Nope. One by one. Ouch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the second question is not a question. It's a statement because that's how language works. Right. Apparently um, my favorite, <laughs> my, <laughs> my favorite um, Slack game is to use emoji that I know doesn't exist in hopes that someone will like toss something in there. I feel like it's a great opportunity for, um, you know, like, <laughs> like backwards, backwards humor that, May not really last, but so we have a shared channel uh, with uh, with WordPress uh, VIP, and somebody did that yesterday, and I couldn't tell. Like it, 
I couldn't tell if they were doing what you're describing where they're putting things in that they know don't exist or that they suspect might not exist, or if they're trying to use emoji that existed previous, because previously we had a channel that was ours on their Slack and now they have, now we have a, one of the new fancy share channels. Um, and yeah, um, because yeah. it definitely doesn't exist on our end, but maybe, I mean, maybe it exists on their end too, but it made me wonder about like, cause like you wouldn't in Slack when you're typing out an emoji and it's like, you know, colon start typing, you don't, nobody types the whole word, right? Like nobody types the whole words. You, you start typing and you hit tab because when does anyone ever write entire words? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I used to like, things in my ID you would have to be pretty, you would words, have yeah. to be pretty committed to continue typing an emoji that doesn't right. exist. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I totally uh, type them out when I know they don't, don't exist in hopes that someone will hop on them. Um, and I've started to see other folks do the same thing. So I kind of like That's that. That's evil. That's evil. Well, and, and the best part is when you see someone else do it, you know, it's and you have that like moment for a distraction, you can go, gosh, what would be like the most, you know, inappropriate thing to put in there or, or <laughs> like what would be, what would, what would make you go, huh? Right? <laughs> like one of, one so of my it's not even a, it's not even a game that's like, let's do something that's representative of this uh, sentiment. It's something that's like, let's do something that would like, Perhaps Be other people treat it that way. Counterintuitive. I'm not mature enough to handle it, though. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, other folks may see it and, and you know, populate it appropriately. Great example, right? Um, I remember this interaction uh, very well at WDS. You put "May the Force be with you" in uh, inside colons for emoji, which mm. didn't have the best. Um, so naturally, I put Jar Jar Binks in there, right? Um, <laughs> and, that, and that was there. I mean, probably it's still there. I don't know. Um, but I loved using that one too when people were. You know, I'm gonna try this, right? May the force be with you. And Jar Jar Binks pops up. Like, is that encouragement or not? I mean, kind of. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, it makes me laugh. So mission accomplished, <laughs> right? Fly the banner. It's and, definitely a weird forward. I don't. I don't know if it's a, a form of positive or negative reinforcement in that particular scenario. <laughs> I mean, it could go either way, right? I mean, I guess that's that's the nuance that is involved in language, and that brings us back to Esperanto. <laughs> it's wonderful how on topic we are today. Oh man, I could talk about emoji all day. Really good. <laughs> and that's why I don't bring that to the table because <laughs> I know our time. Because we're going to get there anyway. What, yeah. One quick emoji sidebar because I, I feel like I have to throw this out there. I um before I was like a professional developer, um, I wrote like a lot of uh, scripts for myself. When this is also before you were a professional artichoke harvester. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm an amateur. I'm an artichoke harvester. If I oh, remember. right. Yeah. Um, give yourself more credit than that. Your artichokes are great. If you sold an artichoke, you're a professional. Um, <laughs> so I, um, I read somewhere that you could use emoji um, as variable names, right, in PHP. So there is a script still running at that company where I have named variables with emoji. Um, it's like the biggest cluster to read. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it worked. It worked. Do you have an emoji domain yet? No, no, no. That's out of the hundred domains I own, none of them are emoji domain. None of them are emoji. I've on. I've looked at emoji domains, and I I just I can't think of a good emoji combination that would be something that could be used. I mean, I guess we could make get one from Binary Jazz, right? Just like ones and zeros, and then a saxophone or something. I don't know. It's just, it's too hard to, to communicate purely in emoji. Did, did either of you ever use that uh, all emoji social network? No. I can't no. remember what it was called, but there is an all emoji social network that lasted about three days until everybody realized that you can't actually communicate. <laughs> we can't do this. <laughs> so, so your username was, was emoji and, and you would post emojis and follow other emoji people and I think that mine was uh, trying to be um, uh, it was trying to be an interpretation of jazz sequence uh, so it was like music notes and ones and zeros I think or something or maybe music notes and like uh, an algorithm I don't know but it didn't really come off what is an algorithm I don't know emoji? was it Al Gore and then like a drum <laughs> <laughs> hooray <laughs> I don't, um, that would I don't, definitely be my, my emoji communication strategy. It would be just, it would be very phonetic. 
<laughs> Algor rhythm. <laughs> There's no Algor emoji though. <laughs> yet. I, it's, yeah, yet. It's like businessman didn't plan it. Yeah. It wasn't part of the list of topics. They were like, these are our must go, like our must haves. Yeah, it'll get there. It'll, I'm sure it'll make it. <laughs> so, so Esperanto is a language, allegedly. No, so what, what we should know about it? <laughs> no, I know it seems like I'm bringing forth a lot of topics that are, that are on, on the fence. No, no, bear I like know, it, it, it so exists. Far, 33%. I, I, <laughs> I just don't know where, because I don't know where it's spoken. Two um, million people speak it. Really? That's a lot more people than I would have expected. Um, Can you give us the hemisphere? Uh, worldwide. Worldwide. Because it is a made up language, um, a constructed okay. language, um, built to bring people together. Oh, well, I like that. Yeah. Really? So, um, I mean, technically there are, now there are native speakers of Esperanto, but that took a while. <laughs> huh. Because you would um, have to teach it to your kids and have them be native speakers. Maybe I need to add it to my Duolingo now. <laughs> and learn it, it. Is it is it Eastern or Western in construction? Um, What's Western? It's not. It's I not think, like it's not like pictor pictograph. No, no. I think um, I think the person who spearheaded it was in Europe. I want to say Poland. And it's it's not an ancient language, clearly. No, how, it was. How recent? Um, See, I was totally going to say it was like a lost language from like before Portuguese and like the Spanish like country, like you know, Spanish part of Europe, you know, but yeah. I would totally buy that too. Yeah, I, well, then I, that's what I said then. I, I just, I just said it. It's yeah, it's pre-Portuguese uh, language from from Portugal. I think it's. I don't know. I, I, I was surprised by how many people speak it now. I guess, but well, and now you can you can add it to to Duolingo, so you can. I know. So you can I didn't learn it. Because I don't even know what it sounds like. I, know I don't know what it sounds like. Either. Oh, somebody does though, because I mean, that's how Duolingo has somebody like saying the word. So then you would be able to hear what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. I'm learning, by the way, the reason why I have Duolingo is I'm learning. Uh, well, I'm, I'm refreshing uh, myself in Italian, uh, which I was inspired to do after going to Italy this, uh, a couple of months ago. Um, and then uh, I'm learning Portuguese. Um, because there's a chance we might go to Portugal for our retreat this year. Um, it's not, it's between Portugal and Sri Lanka, but Sri Lankan is not, or none of the languages that are spoken in Sri Lanka are on Duolingo. So I'm going to just assume that it's Portugal. You're and, hedging your bets. And yeah. Like, well, I mean, like if, if I have to choose between a language that I can't learn and a language that I can learn, I'm going to, you know, maybe we're not going to go to Portugal and I'm just going to learn Portuguese anyway. And it will be bomb. How, how, like how far are you, do you intend to learn this? I mean, you don't, are you looking to be fluent in it before this trip or are you just, you know, the, the normal stuff? Please. I'm going to learn as water. much as I can in the year Experience leading time. or the months leading up to the, the trip and, or until we figure out that we're not going. And I don't know if we figure out that we're not going to Portugal, um, I might stop. I guess it depends on how much I like it. <laughs> it's really, Portuguese is really weird. Um, well, you guys got Brazil as a backup, right? Well, and and the, yeah, and the re the the version the Portuguese that I'm that's in Duolingo is Brazilian Portuguese, not Portugal Portuguese Portuguese, um, which would be okay, slightly yeah, different. I don't know that yeah. it's that much different. I think the pronunciation is different. The pronunciation is just whack anyway, though. Um, knowing like Spanish and knowing Italian, and I'm, I'm obviously more fluent in Italian than Spanish, but I've know some a little bit of Spanish. Like Portuguese is really, really weird to me. Like the way that you pronounce certain letters is just like not the letter at all. <laughs> and and the construction of sentences, like um, Aaron, my partner Aaron was was uh, uh, she's she's doing Duolingo in Spanish, and she was going through these things where it's like he gives her. I don't know, the ball or something, but it's like he, her gives ball or something. Like that's how you say it in Spanish. And it's not that way in Portuguese. In Portuguese, it would be like he gives her the ball, just as, you know, like the, it's, the sentence is constructed in the same way. And th that's pretty much the same in Italian too. So, the, so like, yeah, it's, it's the sentence structure and the, the structure of the, wor the words is pretty, pretty easy, but the words themselves and the pronunciation is just whack. 
and it's similar enough to um, Spanish to make you confused if you're familiar <laughs> with Spanish. It's like similar enough and, and yet different because it's not quite the same. I feel like Spanish, I, I can sort of, if someone is patient with me, you know, doesn't speak English, can speak Spanish, you know, I, I can kind of hang and sort of figure out what they're saying if they go slowly. Um, but that's about it. That's my limit. Yeah, it's hard when, when you're, you're talking to a, a native speaker and they're like, yes, yes. Absolutely. That's why uh, whenever I've been learning a language, I like talking to children because I'm usually on that like first grade level <laughs> and, and also like topics, all my vocabulary like fits in really well where I'm like, <laughs> what is your favorite color? Like I'm like <laughs> super conversational in a way that like a six or seven year old appreciates. There uh, are three trains over there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just like, look at the black cat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it makes sense versus adults are just like I really none of these topics are interesting and I'm like yeah, black cat cool <laughs> where is the elephant <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's that's probably a good strategy though at least anywhere you visit right if you can ask where the elephant is you end up at a zoo <laughs> <laughs> perhaps a crypto zoo you see. <laughs> yeah do you know uh do you know any French Ellison uh, I do a little. Most of my French is food vocabulary because uh, everything is labeled both because it's required. Um, so <laughs> that's where the bulk of it has come from. Because there's some parts of Canada that, that like speak French more than other parts of Canada. That... Yeah, technically it's, uh, it's, we have both recognized as the official languages, but in, like in Quebec, it's largely almost all French. But again, oh, it's the difference between French French and yeah. um, Quebecois French, which is very different. Um, oh. And uh, there's there's judgment there <laughs> if you come in speaking France French. Um, but that being said, they teach in schools. There's lots of French immersion and things, and um, they teach France French, which is interesting. Like Quebecois French is like a lot more. Um, from my interpretation of it, is there's a lot more slang and differences and phrasings and things so some vocabulary doesn't always translate so it's like it's like colloquial english versus the king's english yeah kind of from what my understanding of it i feel like someone who's quebecois might might drag me for that i'm not quite sure my french isn't good enough to <laughs> to fully comprehend but like if you know french and you go to quebec you you would be able to manage just fine but they would also be able to like isolate you as someone that's not Quebecois. <laughs> so do we know if there are dialects of Esperanto? Um, or is it I just mean, like one thing and doesn't matter where, but there probably you can make are. one. Because if it's a worldwide thing, I imagine. And you would think with 2 million speakers that there has to be some regional differences in slang that have appeared in the language. That's, that's an interesting, like, it's interesting to think about like how because certain people in certain areas, because of their native language, would pronounce certain sounds differently than people in other parts of the world. So it's interesting to think about how that would evolve a language that is not representative of, representative of a specific place. Because a lot of because language evolves from a geographic locality and the people that are there, and that's what slang and, and pidgin languages come from. And so, like, if you just re remove that, and it seems like it would evolve out of, like, you know, the, the types of sounds that your mouth is most used to shaping. Like, a, a Japanese person speaking Esperanto would be completely different than an American person speaking Esperanto. What's the most spoken language in the world? Anybody have any idea? It's not English. I would, oh, assume, I would, I would assume it would be English. Just because everybody else who's not in Western countries is being forced to learn it anyway. I, I was surprised how, how easy it was to get around when I was in Italy. Um, like if I chose not to speak Italian, 
because I tried to speak Italian as much as I possibly could because I, I took four years of Italian in high school. So like I felt like I kind of knew and I had also been to Italy in, in high school. So like I, I was feeling that stuff coming back. So I was trying to speak it as much as possible. Um, but I was, I was surprised by how much I didn't have to speak Italian if I, or did, if I chose not to. Um, and other people who didn't know any Italian didn't obviously didn't speak it um, because there's because pretty much everybody spoke it at least a little bit. I mean, they might have spoken it badly, but they n knew it. So French is like the international language of politics, right? Is it? That, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes. as someone not involved in politics generally. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yes, and there's some <laughs> Um, I would argue that English has to be like the international language of um, Bulgarian and swearing. No, no, I think there's probably much dirtier language than English. Um, <laughs> then of commerce um, would be my guess. I feel like that, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe I, I have a, uh, a different lens. Because when, when we were buying stuff from, from Asia, uh, China and Taiwan, um, I mean, I, I could always find someone at a factory that spoke, spoke, wrote, some form of English, you know, and we could exchange ideas and pricing and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, in traveling, traveling in um, Southern China, I didn't have any problem. I mean, I don't speak Mandarin or any, any uh, Chinese dialects, um, but I, I didn't have any issues with language there. I will say I Googled because I was curious. Um, the number one response or the number one language, uh, number one most spoken language is, uh, is Chinese, but they don't really break it down as far as, um, dialect, but I would assume Mandarin. Um, Spanish, number two, which makes sense, right? Spanish, you've got all South America and um, Spain, and where else will they speak Spanish? Maybe that's Central it. America? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking like that. Yeah. United States of America. Yeah. <laughs> South of the United States is not South America, just FYI. I mean, there is, uh, that is South of the United States, but there's this place right. in the middle between South America and North America that is not just all South America. <laughs> they also speak Spanish. Right. Were you all required to take language in high school, like a second language? Yeah. Would, Did they yeah. recommend, was there like a push towards one language over others? Sure. So where I went to school, we were, it was mostly, um, it was the largest Greek population um, per capita in the U.S. So Greek was like the language that everybody took, um, followed by Spanish because Florida. Um, and then uh, French and German were available. And I took German because it seemed really interesting to me. Um, like it really sounded like gross and, you know, I mean, it's my teens and like a phlegmy language was kind of interesting, right? Neat. So that was the draw of German for me, but German and Spanish were the two big ones in my school. Oh, and Latin, I guess, if you were like a nerdy kid. And I was a nerdy kid, but not that kind of nerdy kid. <laughs> yeah, there were three languages offered at my high school. It was French, Spanish, and Italian. Um, and my, I mean, Spanish was probably what most people took. If you're snooty, you took French. Um, there was a lot of uh, Latinos, Latinx, Latinx people uh, at my school. Is that, I don't know how to pronounce that. I know how to read it, but I don't know how to pronounce it. These newfangled words. Um, and I took Italian uh, because I'm a fourth Italian. So I was... And as I've, this is another conversation that I've had with Aaron, which is that, you know, if I was going to choose a language that would be like, I don't know, more beneficial in general moving forward in life, uh, probably it Italian was not the language to take because it's only spoken in Italy, <laughs> which is a place that's fun to go. But outside of Italy, you don't really speak Italian very often don't have really reasons because so Spanish might have been more functional or French. Um, she, she took German in high school. We didn't have that as an option. Um, that's also very kind of the same sort of thing. It's very contained to Germany. And also like in, uh, in uh, Germany, basically everybody speaks English anyway. So uh, your need to actually know German is, is, is greatly reduced. I think. Yeah, I wish I, I took a year of German and then I switched high schools and took Spanish for the remainder. Um, I was really expecting you to say, I, I actually took Esperanto. And I actually, yeah, <laughs> heads up, I'm a native speaker of Esperanto. Whoa, <laughs> mind blown. I would have led with that. 
<laughs> no, no, I think saving to the end would have been way more fantastic. <laughs> I just sign off. I say like goodbye. I just don't even. Esperanza, like, what just happened? <laughs> well, I am gonna check out it on Duolingo now. Um, yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, I might need to do that too. Language samples. <laughs> Maybe our next one will just have a podcast that's entirely us pretending we know Esperanto. <laughs> it won't be very long. <laughs> it's awful hard to remember you know a language and a topic at the same time. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I know both these things. This is fine. Yeah. Um, although I'd like my French to improve because um, my sister in law is French and my niece will is starting to be verbal. So I'd like to know what she's saying behind my back as she grows into a <laughs> a young adult she's only one and a half now but i figure i'll learn with her hopefully and teach her some english along the way <laughs> so that brings us to the part of the show where we answer some questions from our viewers and those and listeners and when we don't have questions we come up with our own or at least allison comes up with some questions for us so Wait, how do people submit questions? There is the excellent question, Gary. I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> if you know. go to the website, binaryjazz.us, right. uh, there is a form right there on the, on the homepage, if you scroll down a bit. Uh, there's also a contact page, which is basically the same thing, uh, where you can enter uh, your, or a name, it doesn't have to be your name, it could be somebody else's name, and, and a question there. You can also contact us on Twitter, uh, at binary jazz and that would be also a great way of getting in touch with us and asking us a question that we will then read on the air and attempt to answer to the best of our ability thank you for an asking that question Gary. thank you for answering that question <laughs> are we ready for the yes question? we're ready okay <laughs> that didn't that didn't count as one correct no that did not okay. count Whew, that's a relief okay favorite cereal mascot I mean, I, I, I kind of have to do Count Chocula, right? Like, I was leaning heavily towards Count Chocula. I mean... <laughs> Unanimous Count Chocula. No, I was leaning heavily towards, but I, I, I don't know if that's... I mean, like, character, right? But I mean, some of that comes into the flavor, you know? Um, I feel like Count Chocula does, Chocula does not go into the flavor at all. <laughs> that's not you know why what? I would choose. I'm going to go pretty passe and say Tony the Tiger. That is pretty passe. Pretty classic, you know? But I mean, that's how like my cereal. Like, nothing remember, controversial about Tony the Tiger. There really isn't. I mean, until you'd learn that he's the, <laughs> a member of the alt right. <laughs> and he's. <laughs> it's and right, he's, not my store brand anyway, so it's probably like, probably like Tiny the Tree Frog or something, you know? Yeah. Like Tiny the Puma. It doesn't even rhyme or no alliteration. Yeah. I do, however, appreciate uh, the. Um, I do, however, appreciate the cereal puffins and how uh, the mascot is obviously a puffin, and uh, that the proceeds, some of the pro portion of the proceeds for from the sale of the cereal goes to a re rescue puffins off the coast of Maine or something. That's fantastic. What is that cereal called? Puffin cereal. Yeah, puffins. Oh wow, well, I haven't seen that. It's in the like natural food section, so you have every reason to not have any idea what it is our store is interesting because it doesn't have like a natural food section it it just it puts everything like in the section that it belongs to and it's usually like at the left as you're standing facing it so it's you know it's just labeled separately that um you know well then it would be in the cereal healthy section stuff is to the left. what's that healthy stuff is to the left of that appropriate section. yes i i mean i, I can't say that's like always 100 percent true it's um, always 100 percent true there well, is, there's def, there's a definite left right thing. Store, yeah, there is, but in my grocery store, I'm saying is I, I don't I don't stock the grocery store amongst the things I do. That's not one of them. I feel like it's always to the left, but I don't uh, want someone that uh, lives uh, in Jacksonville to go to my Publix and say you lied. A popular a popular topic uh, when I was in high school was how in San Francisco you cannot turn left. There's no left turns yeah, everywhere and that was like a, a, a social commentary obviously oh. hmm. you can't turn left okay so next question, question. Number two. Okay, next question uh were you named after anyone no yes. next question <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah so family names are big in my family i'm named after my dad i share the first same first name and then my middle name comes from my grandfather my mom's side middle name my son has my middle name and my brother-in-law's first name. And my daughter um, has my wife's grandmother's name. And um, my 
mom's grandmother's maiden name as a middle name. Um, so yeah, anyway, names are a thing in my family and they kind of stick around. So I'm not named after no one. My daughter's middle name is my great grandmother, my maternal great, my grandmother's mother, who was uh, the first immigrant in our family to travel from Italy to the United States. And my son's middle name is his, is my wife's grandfather's name, Edwin. Their first names are not family names, but their middle names are. Okay, oh, moving on. I have a question. That was a fun one. What was the last song that you chose to listen to? And what was the last song someone made you listen to? <laughs> and made you maybe just being like they chose to play it and you m might not have made that choice. Jeez, I feel like the list of songs I've been made to listen to are very long because Pandora. And <sighs> like I start Pandora in the morning and then I'm, you know, then I'm, I'm, I'm deep in, in work and I, what, what am I listening to, you know? You're in the throes of the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. 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 So whatever Pandora played last, we, let's see. While you're looking, uh, the last song that I chose to listen to, I've got a playlist that I put together uh, recently because um, a friend of mine uh, who's a musician just recorded a covers album. And I was thinking about like what songs I would cover if I was going to cover songs. And so I made a playlist in iTunes of songs that I would like to maybe cover in there. And I decided after one or two songs that like the songs that I wanted to cover were all songs that were recorded by women. Um, so I made, so I have this all like riot girl, mostly riot girl, but basically lots of angry women yelling at men uh, playlist of. So the last song that I chose to listen to uh, was off of that. And it was uh, shit list by L7. The last one that I chose to listen to was um, zombie cranberries. Mm. So. I, I will say In, I because like, of Dolores O'Riordan. Yeah. 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 Um, I, uh, Not because of, because you, as we've discussed, you're very anti zombie. So. <laughs> <Correct. Yeah. laughs> this strong. is where the continuity between the episodes comes and becomes important. I don't know if impo important is quite, quite a stretch. <laughs> um, I feel like you, you are both very uh, much more intentional about music. Whereas I am like, a, I mean, I could, I could, I could probably live with the radio, you know, I can make it happen. But all the commercials bother me. But I mean, I, I just, I want someone, I want a personal DJ that would just like react to my body language when I'm working and say, oh, we need to, we need to mix that up a little. That would be ideal for me. Um, That's interesting because that is like, I mean, when I was DJing, when I was DJing parties and clubs and stuff, um, I would read the audience and play things based on how I, the, the feeling of, of what I was seeing on the floor. So yeah, that is totally a thing. Maybe I'll put in a request to see if I can get like a budget item for a personal DJ. <laughs> Just like somebody in the corner figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then we can have lunch together. You know? <laughs> this is I think awesome. That's a friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's depressing. <laughs> I mean, I've, I, I, this is just I, my interpretation. I've only heard about these things called friends, but not entirely familiar. <laughs> yeah, we, it's, it's funny, you know, working remotely, right? Like the, you know, when you work like in an office, you're the people that you eat lunch with, but working remotely, you're like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll grab whatever leftovers in the fridge from last night or peanut butter and jelly um, and, and eat with my dog. It's kind of like the, the standard until, until you're like, man, I haven't been out of the house for three days. Like I'm going for sushi or, you know, whatever. That never happens. Uh, it does. You're leaving I, the house. Yeah, you leaving the house. Sushi. Yeah, I've had calls while, oh, leaving the house, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've done it. We've, we've done it. We've Another successfully episode. completed episode 11. No. Nicely yes. Done. Yes. <laughs> Nicely done. I'm proud of us. I, why is that funny? I'm, I'm proud of us. I think it's a good thing. Let's do this again next Thursday. Let's get a few more in the tank, huh? Let's do it. Okay. Have an awesome day.